Uh, I'm Fiona. I work for Wopcom as a network engineer. And the title of my today's talk is The State of RPKI ROAs on Peering LANs. That's some pretty complicated words, so um, I'll explain them. What exactly is a peering LAN? An internet exchange basically is some kind of switch or multiple connected switches in a fabric and we connect routers there and give them IP addresses in a subnet. So the routers can talk layer two to each other. And this subnet, this is what we call a peering LAN here. So this is a screenshot of the peering DB entry of DKX Frankfurt and we see this slash 21 and a slash 64 for IPv6. So what happens if someone announces a more specific of that prefix and you accept it? And this could be maliciously, someone could have a route leak, someone could have um, set the wrong net mask on their peering port and screwed up their routing filters. You accept the route and kaboom. It's not good. So um, your router will perform a recursive lookup of all the routes pointing to that part of the peering LAN and will redirect the traffic to that entity that announced the more specific to you. So uh, if, you are, if you are lucky, your BGP sessions will go down and after 90 seconds, things will get better. But if you are unlucky, you still can connect to the route server, you still have the routes, and you happily redirect the traffic to that party, and who knows what they are doing with it. Maybe they are black holing it, maybe they are looking at it. Nobody really knows. So this is not good. How do we fix this? So we basically do what we always do with BGP problems. We apply more filters. And Traditionally, we go to our routers and we configure a prefix list on all our edge routers with, the, uh, with all the peering LANs that we are connected to or maybe that our downstreams are connected to as well if we want to protect them. And then we apply a, pref uh, a pre policy statement that matches to those prefixes and longer, very important, and rejects them. So. This solves the problem for us. It's a bit of operational effort to keep these lists up to date, but we have automation. This is fine. But, well, this doesn't help, help us if all our peers don't apply these filters, because let's face it, maybe they don't have the time, maybe they don't have enough engineers, or they are not aware of that issue. So, do we still have to write these filters manually? We have RPKI nowadays, right? So is there a solution for that? We can create our ROAs for the peering LAN and set a max prefix length, and then nobody can announce a more specific to us, right? Um, this works, but it's a bit weird, because then we uh, allow someone to announce an, a prefix of our peering LAN, which is RPKI valid, and most internet exchanges don't want their peering LAN to be somewhere in the internet in the default free zone. So is there a way to say that the prefix should never be accepted with RPKI? Yes, there is something. It's called AS0. So what a duck is AS0? It's an invalid AS number, and the smart people who wrote the RFCs for RPKI um, thought, hey, why not use this for exact this, exactly this purpose? So they say, a ROA with a subject of AS0 is an attestation that the prefix should not be used in a routing context. So this will always be RPKI invalid. Neat. That's pretty nice. That solves exactly our problem. Let's have a look how the adoption in internet exchanges for internet exchanges is. Um, PeeringDB has more than 700 internet exchanges and going through all of these and copy-pasting the prefix and performing a lookup against, the RIPE, uh, against an RPKI validator is a lot of effort. So we need to build something, we need to script something and I hacked together some Python scripts, they were slow and didn't really provide the data I wanted. I set up a database and wrote some sm slow SQL queries, and at some point I decided, hey, why not buy a domain and put it public on the internet so people can have a look if their 
internet exchanges implemented it correctly. It's glitchy.network. It's online, you can access it, and um, let's have a look at it. So um, let's have a look at one of the largest internet exchanges of the world. This is IXBR. As you can see, it's green, so they implemented correctly. Let's have a look at DKX Frankfurt. They implemented correctly as well. Interestingly, they don't implement it correctly on the sixth largest internet exchange in the world, which they also operate, the DKX Mumbai. The third largest internet exchange, Lynx London, kind of implements it for IPv4, so there is an ROA with an, a max prefix length which would help us in preventing these route leaks, but they completely forgot it for IPv6. And as we progress, whoops, ah yeah, as we progress through the list, uh, you can see the farther down we go, the worse it gets. So looking at the numbers, we see that more than half of the peering lands that are documented in peering DB don't have a raw at all. So we have a lot of work to do, and this is why I'm holding this lightning talk. I want to raise awareness, talk to your IXPs, ask them why they are not implementing this correctly. And um, all, this is also a shout out to, for example, Euro IX. Talk to your members, add this to your policies or to your guides, um, and make the internet a better place and a more safe place. Thank you. Any questions? So, Fiona, I can give you an answer why these prefixes are announced. Um, there are smaller exchanges where people do not have in-band, uh, out-of-band management of their equipment, and they use the in-band management by announcing the prefixes to go to their equipment. So maybe you should check how big these actually are, and uh, maybe find a better solution with the data center operators. Yeah, there are some, and there even is a flag in peering DB for never allowed in DFZ. So yeah, for for some, this is. Uh, they, they, they want it to be in DFZ, but still this is not a reason to not have an RRA at all. I totally agree. Okay, we have an online question. Any question? Uh, not really a question, just a comment. Thank you for uh, presenting that. Um, uh, your ex has heard it. And, um, you know, I'd like to invite you to the next meeting to come and talk to a lot of more IXPs about this. So, yeah, I would uh, love to. Thank you. Yeah.